My name is Billy. I've been in crypto for like 10 years. Recently started something called Intuition, which is kind of like sustainable yield farms for knowledge. Um, and I wanted to start this off doing something interesting. So I LP in this fund called Wisdom Ventures, started by Jack Kerouac. And they start off every meeting with a meditation, which I think is, a, is kind of a cool concept. And it kind of gets everyone in the, the same state of mind going into the meeting. And they kind of like end up much more productive than they would otherwise be. So I've never led a meditation before. I'm not like a big breathing guy, but let's just like close our eyes real quick and just like pay attention to your breath, slow it down, maybe do like four seconds in, four seconds out, something like that. <laughs> we'll do it for like 10 more seconds. Cool. You can keep doing that if you want the whole time. That'd be kind of nice. <laughs> um, but basically, like, the talk is called Seeing the World Through Social Graphs. And it's also just, like, we see the world through these, like, reality tunnels. We see them through these lenses. And I think that not just social graphs, but just kind of, like, our current state of mind kind of dictates how we experience reality. So I don't know. I hope that that helped a little bit. Um, and so Simona said to make this interactive. So question for you guys. Um, how, did you, how did you first hear about Ethereum? Was it through a friend? Was it through someone you trust? Was it, was it some sort of social media figure that you trust? Like, how did you hear about Shelling Point? Like, was that from someone you trust? Like, did, how did you find this information? Um, we're kind of, we're, all of us here are kind of lucky that we've, we've stumbled upon this place because there's some people trapped in like Cardano hell who think that like Cardano is the future. And there's some people who think that like Orange Coin with total supply cap of 21 million is just the only thing that matters in the world. And so like all of us here, I think, have this different perspective. And I think that we've gotten that perspective because our, our echo chambers, our reality tunnels um, are kind of curated using our, our social graphs and, and the people that we trust. And luckily, we found some good people to trust. Um, so I want to do also one more quick exercise. So look around you. And, and try to find someone that you don't know yet. Um, and ask them their name. Ask them what they do. And try to figure out if you know someone that they know. See if you're connected to these people in, in any way. And we'll give it like 30 seconds for you to do this. Sweet. Awesome. Thank you guys for doing that. Um, and, and the reason I wanted to, to do that is is now that you've, you've talked to this person a little bit, and now that you've maybe found some sort of common connection, do you trust this person a little bit more? Um, if, the, if they had a recommendation for you for a restaurant in Denver, like, would you trust them over some random review? Um, and I, I think the answer is, is probably yes. And, and back in the day, we lived in these tribes of like 150 people or less. And this is kind of how the world worked. We just we had these rich social like connections with everything and everyone that we interacted with. Um, like these four, these six guys probably knew each other pretty well, and the guy with the rock and the stick probably knew that rock and that stick really well because they they were able to capture all of this metadata through personal experience, and they were able to store it in their biological wetware because there just wasn't that much information. Um, and now we interact with thousands of things, probably on a daily basis. And so we we far surpassed Dunbar's limit. And so we have to supplement with technology. We have to outsource our cognition to technological tools. And so at the beginning, we had like books and we had the printing press and you had these kind of like, you had a select few people who, were, who had a platform to have their voice be heard. Um, so sure, you had, you had your community, you had your people, but then you had some people writing books and so data started disseminating through technology. And then we got the radio and more people were able to have a voice. You didn't have to spend five years writing a book. Like every night you could just go on a radio station and have your voice be heard by millions of people. And then we got TVs and you could actually see a person's face. It wasn't just some shadowy figure behind the radio saying something. Now you could see the person who's doing the talking and, and maybe you trust them a little bit more because now the person is humanized. You can like see who they are. And so we started to kind of like place our trust in these kind of like social figures. Um, but this kind of like centralized model is, is not always good. And, and trusting like a singular voice oftentimes results in
in tribalism because the people with a platform oftentimes use that platform to kind of to, to bend people to their will. Maybe not even intentionally, but maybe unintentionally um, because everyone's just expressing their view and opinion of the world. And then we all like get trapped in these various echo chambers that are curated by like our reality tunnels. Um, and so now we have pretty cool technology and, and now everyone can have a platform. Everyone can have a voice. Um, and like now what we do is we supplement with Twitter and Instagram to get a feel for who a person is before we talk to them or do business with them. And we supplement with Yelp reviews for a restaurant before we sit down for dinner. Um, and although we are doing things better than we pro probably ever have, there's still a few problems. So we all have hundreds of disparate application specific accounts. So we have like hundreds of disparate digital identities out there. And using each of those identities, we generate data and we generate social graphs on each of these platforms we interact with. So I've got my Twitter social graph, I've got my Facebook social graph, I've got my Instagram social graph. And each, in each of those places, I have a different identity. Um, and basically what the result is, is on platforms like Amazon and Yelp, I, I, I currently am not overlaying this data with my social graph. All I'm doing is looking at just a laundry list of reviews from people that I don't know and don't trust. And we're relying on this information for so much of our decision-making process. Like I always look at the Amazon reviews. I only buy things with like over four stars. Like if there's two restaurants and one has five star reviews and the other one is like rated 3.6 stars, I'm definitely going to go to the five star review one, even though like I have never written an Amazon review. I've never written a Yelp review. I click five stars on Uber every time because I just don't care. And like, if, if, if you've ever written an Amazon review, please, please raise your hands. Okay, we got two people. If you've ever written a Yelp review, please, please raise your hands. <laughs> We have zero people. Okay, so, so this data <laughs> that we're digesting to make these decisions in our everyday lives is just so flawed. And what we're doing is we're only capturing data at the extremes. We're capturing maybe if you have an extremely negative experience with someone or something, you leave an extremely negative review. And on the, the other extreme, people are just getting paid to leave all these fake positive reviews or it's the company themselves. Um, and so... The result is we all have all of this information that's trapped in our heads, that's not making its way into the digital realm in any structured format. And so what I think we need to do is kind of like capture the intuition of humanity and like leverage our social graphs to be able to distill the signal from the noise to make better decision make like have better dis decision making power in our everyday lives. Um, and so what I want to what I want to do is I want to see what my friends are saying about about people. I don't want to just see like this laundry list of data from people that I don't know. I want to see like what what Kames is saying about John Doe, and I want to see like see what like Maine is saying about like this article on social media instead of just like these random comments from people that I have no connection to, or like what my friends are saying about a, a product or a business. Um, for ETH Denver, we built this little app where it's like there's there's 200 events like satellite at events at ETH Denver. And what you have to do is to figure out what the good events are, you have to text your friends or have a conversation with them. And you're like, hey, dude, where are you going to be tonight? And it's like, okay, what if instead of that process, it was like, you could just attest to anything about anything. You could attest to things about an event. And then you could see what your friends are saying about the event in a digital format instead of needing to talk to them. Um, like we're also like fundraising right now. And the only way that I can figure out who the good venture capitalist firms are is because I haven't done this before is literally talking to people and talking to the people that I trust, which seems like it's such an insane process. Um, and another problem is on Twitter, my feed probably looks so much different from most of your feeds. Like we all have, and each of our feeds probably looks so different from like a person who's, I don't know, from a like, into sports or something like that. <laughs> like they just probably have like all this sports stuff. And so the result is we kind of exist in these, these reality tunnels and the data we digest is very much curated by the people we follow and the people we trust. And so you get some weird results from this. So a year ago I was in Bali when the Ukraine, like Russia war broke out and my reality tunnel was saying, what is Russia doing? None of the Russians believe in this war. It's all Putin. None of the actual people support this. Uh, I don't know. Nobody knows why they're doing this. It's just like Putin's ego. And in Bali, there was a bunch of 
people from Russia, and I asked them what they thought about the war, and every single person was like, oh, we totally support this. Like, it's, it's totally the U.S.'s fault. And I was like, oh, my God, like, you are just digesting entirely different data sets than I am because my reality tunnel is filtered by, like, I don't know, my social graph. And so what I think we need to be able to do is kind of like, like everything is social consensus. And so what we have to be able to do is step into other people's shoes and like equip their social graphs, equip their view of the world so we, that we can see the data they're digesting to come to these conclusions about the world. Like we're all, there's like base layer reality. And then we have these like lenses and filters that overlay reality that like give us different experiences and like make us view the world in different ways. And so what I think we need to do is not just have better tools for enhancing our own social graphs, but we also need tools that allow us to like step into someone else's shoes and step into their social graph and equip their social graph to view the data. So for instance, if I'm new to Web3 and I don't yet have a strong Web3 social graph, what I should be able to do is like equip the lens of Vitalik and see the world through Vitalik's social graph as opposed to mine where I, don't, I just don't have any connections there. And I think if we can do this, I think like the world becomes like a way better place because I think we, we find that we like, um, that we aren't really that different in the end. Um, sorry, I'm getting emotional. <laughs> but yeah, uh, that's all. That's my talk. Thank you all.